What's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. We have another collaboration tutorial. Uh, Alessandro Boncio from Render King came up with this really, really nice render and I'm going to walk you through how it was created. Alright, so we're going to dive into the node tree and do a little bit of a more detailed in-depth tutorial here. Before I do, I wanted to mention that all these uh, drops on this bottle are using the Octane Scatter. If I delete this uh, kind of wet glass texture off that sphere, you can see it a little bit better. So we just took a sphere and put it inside the Octane Scatter and then we specified that we want it to be on the surface of the bottle. And then we have a couple random effectors just so that they have random sizes. So that's how we did all of those uh, bubbles on the surface of the bottle. And I'm just gonna turn these off for now. All right, so let's talk about texturing. First of all, let's put on this original wet glass texture onto that bottle so we can see what we're starting with. And let's open this up and go to our node editor. You can see that we have that glass texture, but we also have this roughness channel, kind of having some of these blemishes, and we also have some bump going on. So I'm gonna delete a bunch of this stuff just so that we can get started from scratch and I can walk you through it. So here's what the glass looks like without anything. And we do have a object inside of the bottle, which is another bottle that's just a bit smaller and has a yellow texture on it, just so there's a bit of volume to it. And this uh, starting out texture is simply a specular that's green. It has some glass settings, but it's very basic. And the main thing that we did is we added a scattering medium. So we added a scattering medium and changed the density to 25 and to four. And that gives you this result, which is a really nice starting place. All right, so we're gonna add all of those blemishes and scratches by using these two maps here. So we have two maps from our uh, latest product, which is called Blemish Pro, and it has a hundred of these different scratch maps. And you just put these into your roughness channel and get some really nice blemishes on your object. All right, so we're using these two different textures. One is a bit more gray and white, and one has more black and is a bit more crushed. And we're gonna mix these two. All right, so we have our two textures here, and they're set to box projection, and they're ready to get piped in. So let's pipe one of these into our roughness channel here, and we'll see what it looks like. And that's what uh, that map is gonna do, just give it a bit of a blemish there, and then we'll pipe the other one into our roughness channel and see what that looks like. And this one's gonna be a bit more of that icy, kind of frosty look. All right, so we wanna mix these two together so that we have both of them at the same time. And we're gonna do that using an add. You can also use a multiply and play around with that, but the add has two different textures. We're gonna simply pipe both of these textures into texture one and texture two, and then we'll output this to our roughness. And now we're mixing both of these textures together. Now, if you wanna really see what's going on, it's nice to right click on that add and click on solo node. Uh, but unfortunately, when you're using a specular material, it doesn't work. So I like to go to the material type and change that to diffuse, and then you can visualize what's going on. So let's go to the individual image texture and solo that one. And we're gonna wanna add a gradient so we can really dial this in. You always wanna add a gradient after your texture, and then you can crush it kind of like you would with a levels adjustment in Photoshop. So we'll drag that onto the node. And then in our gradient, we can play around with these sliders. And if we right click on this solo node, I guess, oh, there we go, now it's updating. So you can see that we're able to kind of crush this and really dial in what look we want with this gradient. So that's looking pretty good. Let's add another gradient to the other texture and then let's right click and solo note on that one and we can dial that texture in as well. And then if we wanna see what they both look like combined, we can right click and go to solo note on that add. And this is the two textures that are being combined. All right, so that's looking good. Let's disable the solo node, go back to that original texture, and let's change that to a specular again. All right, so that's a great start, but we wanna make this look like frost. So we actually want to pipe all these textures into the bump channel as well. And we're gonna start by adding a multiply node. So we'll drag and drop a multiply node in, and we're gonna drag that add node into the multiply. So we have both of these textures also going into this multiply, and we'll take that and put it into our bump. Now this is gonna be pretty extreme because we have the full effect of these textures in here. So we're gonna to wanna to dial that back and we're gonna do that by using a float. So a float is just gonna allow you to dial back the intensity of that bump. We're gonna drag the float into texture two here. And then in the float, we can control how much bump we have with this slider right here. So if we go to point one and dial it back quite a bit, you can see that it's still a little bit extreme, but I'll leave it pretty high up for this tutorial just so you can see it better. All right, so we have our bump and we have our glass texture with smudges and now we want to add our label. 
So we have a label already made and it has a template with the logos already set up. And we also have a black and white PNG we're gonna cut out the logo with. All right, so we're gonna make a mixed material. So we'll go to material and then go to mixed material. We're gonna call this label. All right, so let's open that up and we have two slots here. So we're gonna drag that white glass into the bottom slot and then we're gonna drag the label into the top slot. Make sure we put this onto the bottle here so we can see what's going on. Instead of using a float texture, we need to punch out the alpha by using this PNG that's black and white. So we'll just drag and drop that onto this slot right here and now we have our label. The final thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take all these roughness uh, areas with the bump and we wanna make these white so that it looks like frost. So we're gonna to go to a new material and we're gonna add a glossy material to be the frost. So we're gonna call this frost and let's open that up and let's change the BRDF model to GGX and the index is pretty close. Let's just make it 1.35 and that will be our frost. All right, so now we need to mix the frost with the original scratch maps. And we're gonna do that with a mix material. So we'll go to material. We're gonna add another mix material. We're gonna call this one final. And we'll drag that onto our bottle here. All right, we'll open up that mix material and we want to drag our frost channel into one of the slots and then our label onto the top slot here. We want to specify exactly where to put this ice and we want it on those scratch maps, right? Not just a simple float. So we're gonna delete the float, clear that out. Now, how are we gonna access those scratch maps? Well, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is go to the node editor and our original scratch maps are going to be in here. Now, it's a little bit hard to see right now. It's a bit of a disaster in here. Looks like a pile of spaghetti noodles. We can simplify this quite a bit by highlighting everything and then going to view and then auto arrange selected. And then we can clean things up a little bit. All right, so here are our original scratch maps right in here. Now we could copy and paste these up and then pipe them into our final texture into the amount, but we can also just pipe this uh, node directly into the amount. So because we have our scratch maps already set up, we can just take this output and also put it into the amount. And then we're gonna be using these scratch maps to specify what has ice and what doesn't. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's drop that into the amount. And you can see that I think I have these wrong. These are backwards. So the frost has to be on the top. Let's drag that onto the top and then we'll put the label on the bottom, see what that looks like. And now you can see that wherever we have those scratch maps, we're getting that icy look. So that's perfect. Now, just like before, if we wanna dial this in, we're gonna use the gradient. And uh, we're gonna type in gradient here. And it's a little bit hard to see what line it is, but you can see that the one going into the amount is the one we wanna drop the gradient on. So that's this one right here. And um, it looks like it's having a hard time piping that in correctly. So we'll just do it manually. And we'll put that into the amount. All right, so we have our gradient here. And it's a little bit extreme, so if we wanna take that down a notch, what we can do is double click on this white knot and make this gray instead. That's gonna dial it back a little bit. All right, so there's the final. Let me actually open up Alessandro's render so you can see the final one with all the octane scatter and everything. So here's Alessandro's final render. You can see that we have this really nice frost here. We have those little water droplets back on. And it's pretty crazy because this entire render, all the realism is based on two roughness maps. So it's a really nice way to add quite a bit of realism. Hope you guys found that useful. Also, I hope that you're able to check out Blemish Pro. It has a hundred of these different maps. They're all seamless, they're 8K resolution, and it's a great way to add a lot of realism to your renders. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.